Hello everyone, welcome to the Color Wheel, welcome to Color Studies. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, we're just going to work with mixing some colors today uh, around the Color Wheel, which some of you are probably familiar with, or most of you anyway. Uh, we're going to use the same watercolors that you have in the kit that I uh, got for everybody. If you have something similar, that's fine. If you notice, I've popped out a lot of the colors that were in here, and they will just come right out. You can just uh, pop those out like this. And uh, that's because I only want us to use these primary colors uh, that we have here on the, uh, uh, in the kit. So only the primaries, which are red, yellow, and blue. So um, most of you are probably familiar with the color wheel. And I've been kind of working some water into this yellow to get started. That's what I'm going to start with, and I think that's uh, a good place to start because yellow is the weakest color and it's the easiest to change to a different color. So we want to get a nice strong yellow, just picking up a little bit of water with the brush there. So this is going to take a little bit of work. And I want to show you how to uh, how to begin painting these, and then we'll probably just finish this uh, mostly with time lapse. But there are two 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 goals uh, really in doing this. The first is to uh, learn to mix colors and to mix the proper colors, uh, and then the other thing is to learn to control the paint. So neatness is a priority. You, you want to uh, you want to paint inside these lines, right up to the lines, and not outside them and uh, not work like this. So uh, painting doesn't work this way. Hold that like you would a pencil, control it very carefully, lay those colors in very carefully. So I'm gonna start, like I said, with the yellow. And we just wanna work right along that edge, smoothly and carefully, slowly, see? just slowly. And if you've mixed enough of that yellow watercolor in, you should get a nice intense yellow. And very carefully along the edge. Now, when you're doing this, you can turn your paper so that you get a nice comfortable angle at whatever you're painting. So you don't have to leave it uh, straight at 90 degrees like I have it but I'm gonna leave it this way just for, uh, just for the sake of clarity. So there's a nice yellow, right? So our next color is going to be yellow green, which means basically we're gonna keep the yellow that we have, but we're going to start mixing a little bit of blue into it. So with just a tiny bit of blue, this should begin to change to green, and it should be a yellow green if we only have a small amount of blue. So I'm gonna pick up a little extra water, start working this blue color. I don't think that's... Now these might not look um, quite the way you would imagine being uh, watercolor paints. The pigments aren't as pure as what we would see. So I think that's a pretty good yellow green. I wanna pick up a little more yellow. And you know, at the end of the day, you can go back and, or actually anytime you want, you can take this over to the sink and just rinse all these out and they'll be nice and uh, perfectly clean again. So they won't have any additional colors. So that probably looks like green, but that's a yellow green because it's very definitely a warm yellowish green and that looks like a good, a good color for this next section. So again, really carefully, really slowly, like you're a surgeon, right? Like this is a scalpel. You wanna just make it as precise as you can, because you really do need to learn to control that paint 
especially when we get to our next project, which is the illuminated manuscript page. You're going to want to use this paint very precisely, very carefully. Okay, so that's the yellow green. So uh, I'm going to work up to the blue using this uh, same sort of uh, progress and uh, I'm going to do that in time lapse and then we'll uh, start on the next one. Okay, now I've worked my way around where I'm about to do the blue. So since we're starting with a fresh primary color, I want to rinse these out because I've got a bunch of yellow here in my blue and I don't want that to kind of pollute this color. I want a nice clean blue. So I'm going to stop to clean my brush to rinse these off and then we'll start with that next blue color. So I've rinsed this all off and look, it looks uh, brand new. So there's nice, uh, nice clear colors to work with. So we're going to start uh, I think working our way around from the blue into the red violet and over to red so this calls for pretty well what we were doing before so I'm going to start out just with a little water here on my palette as much as I can and then I'll start picking up some blue And of course, the one thing that you want to do always when you're working with these paints is just to be careful. Work, work carefully and slowly and kind of contemplatively. I may be moving a little quicker than I would like you to on these projects because I'm trying to keep these videos fairly short. So just do everything slowly and carefully. And remember when you're working on your uh, illuminated manuscript project when you're doing the color part of that project you'll want to keep in mind that if you want your colors to look good and clear and clean you want to wash your brush often you want to probably rinse out your paints often so you get the cleanest colors that you can so they don't look muddy so on to the blue and I'm going to uh, again do this uh, sort of in uh, uh, time-lapse mode so we're not taking up too much of your time. And now to get these violet colors, these purple colors, I'm going to start adding just a small amount of red to shift that over. So the red violet, we want that to look like a very dark purple, like a very dark sort of purpley color like this. Maybe even a little more blue than that. That may be too much red. So it's going to be the darkest color on the color wheel. Now your purple color should just be that nice grapey purple that you think of. Like a grape soda. <laughs> 
just right between red and blue. So you don't want it to lean too much one way or the other. You want it to be that nice grapey purple color. So we're just adding a little more red as we go. Okay, so we've worked our way around from blue through blue-violet, violet, and red-violet. The red-violet, uh, it's a little hard to see now because it's still wet, but um, I'd say that's something like a burgundy color, right? Uh, that's a, a, maybe a good name, a maroon, something like that. So since we're going to start again with our next primary color, which is red, I'm going to clean these all up again, rinse everything, and then come back and start not with the red, but with the yellow again, because if we start with red, you'll never be able to add enough yellow to make this work. So because the yellow is such a light color, we're gonna start again with the yellow and work our way back this way to the red. So I wanna emphasize again how important it is to keep your brush clean, keep clean water at your uh, workstation there. If you need to get a clean plate, do that. Uh, but also rinse your paints in between all these different steps so that you can keep these colors looking the way they should. Don't get sloppy and start to mix all three colors together. It's gonna look very muddy and brown and all that. So we're gonna start again from the yellow, work our way around to the red, adding small amounts of red as we go. Because if we tried it the other way around, uh, it, would, it would take forever. So uh, I'll start that and then we will uh, we'll recap here at the end. So for that yellow-orange, what you want to do is start with the yellow as I did, add just a little bit of red, and uh, then lay that down there so that it's a nice, sunny, bright yellow-orange color. Not like basketball orange, you was going to save that for the next one, but this one should be a, a light, warm, yellow-orange color, right? So very little red, and that's got to be leaning mostly toward the yellow there. So once again, we've worked our way around so that we're almost to the red. So I'm gonna rinse that red out so there's no yellow in it. Uh, and then we'll lay that in and that'll be the end of our color wheel. So I've rinsed out my colors again, got some fresh water, cleaned my brush really well. So I'm gonna get a nice true red. I'm gonna move this around so I can get a fresh place to work. Be really careful not to drip onto your uh, your artwork there. And this, I don't even need to use the plate. Well, maybe I will. The red in this kit is sort of a cool red, but it's making some very nice orange colors. So I think this is a, a actually quite a good kit for doing this. So we we lucked out there. But you can tell this is this is sort of a cool red. It's not 
uh, really bright, warm fire engine red. It's more like a berry red, like raspberry or something. But it seems to mix really well with both the blue and the yellow. So actually, this is a very good kit for doing this. And so keep in mind, I'm using the same colors you're using. I'm using the same brush. And if I can do this, you can do it. I believe in you. You're just gonna have to take your time, be patient. Uh, these are a little bit wet still, so the red is hard to see because it's reflecting, but all the other colors are looking as they should. So this is the rubric, right, for this assignment. You want to match these colors as close as possible, and you want to lay them down as neatly as possible, just like this. So not big blobs outside the lines. Uh, try to keep it as smooth and even inside the lines as you can. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll, you, know, you can make it uh, look very good. And so this is the target to shoot for. Uh, next, next time, next week, or uh, right, next week, we'll start out with uh, some color harmonies that are sort of based on the color wheel. Uh, and then I'll see you for that. So do your best work, and I will see you uh, soon. Have a good weekend. God bless you all.